Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Dear ladies, gentlemen, honorable guests, all protocols observed. It gives me pleasure to be part of this event and to participate in the opening of the exhibition of late Father Giovanni Fantini, celebrating his life, his work, and his legacy. I regret my absence outside the country. I really wanted to be there with you physically in the conference hall of Compagni College of Science and Technology. I'm supposed to give uh, some uh, personal memories on uh, uh, Father Va Giovanni Vantini's. Now, I was first got acquainted and introduced to Giovanni Vantini when my professor Ali Osman informed me that I need to consult oriental sources concerning Nubia. And uh, of course, uh, the oriental sources concerning Nubia is collected and translated by Father Giovanni Vantini and published as a field manual for excavators at the request of the Society for Nubian Studies, the Polish Academy of Science, and with other groups, which has been published in 1975. What is important about this uh, manuscript is that it's not only figures or individuals, but other documents as well have been consulted like Coptic documents from the 10th to 12th century, uh, Coptic uh, scale of the 12th and 14th century, up to Tabagato de Falla and to the Funch Chronicles. Uh, he integrated and gathered all the writings concerning Nubia that hitherto have been scattered in uh, sources written in, in Arabic and in other uh, languages. Now, after I consulted that book, I started following his publications, books, and articles. Uh, in 1978, we have the history of Christianity in Nubia in Arabic, which was reworked in Italian, Christianity in ancient Nubia in 1985. And uh, we have the center of Muhammad Umar Bashir uh, at Ahliya University, who again uh, published the book in 1998 um, and actually uh, they are being re republishing uh, his book Christianity in Sudan which he published in 1981. Another book which has been through it is Rediscovering Christian Nubia which has been published in 2009 translated into Arabic and published in 2013 and the last one is a compilation of the old work that have been conducted uh, in the Sudan concerning Christianity as well as adding more and more um, chapters to the already uh, published book. When I came to the realm of articles, we have Christianity in Sudan in 1982, uh, which has been published in African Affairs, Royal African Society. And another important article that is the remote, remotest places reached by Nubians Christianity in Sudan. That is very interesting as he cited archaeological evidence, anthropological evidence, and literary evidence. He presented it as a paper in a conference and published uh, in the International Journal for Coptic, Meroitic, Ethiopian and Related Studies in 1999. I must mention here, before concluding my speech referring to his articles and his books, the Christianity in Sudan, in which he handled the heritage of Christian Nubia life, 40 days, uh, for example, the 40 days heritage, the plates, the evil eye, um, the rituals in Nuba mountain, that, is not, that means it's not only in a uh, river in uh, Sudan, and therefore at the Medub, at the Berti, at the Bidjid rituals, also among the Blue Nile and in the desert, uh, like in Salima Oasis and uh, the road of uh, the 40 days, that is Darb al Arba'in, and then in Khornubut in Eastern Sudan, in the desert. Now uh, we have more and more information about uh, new a Christian remains that's been discovered at the Gaab, that is west of Dungula, and uh, uh, beside monasteries and more and more uh, information are coming from the desert area. It is very interesting to, 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 to discover that he referred even to Hornubud, because Hornubud for us is um, an area where, where the fairest evidence of Muslim tomb stones have been found. Now, it is very clear that um, he was inspired by the rich history of the country. That is one thing. And the other thing is that uh, he was remembered with affection by his Muslims and Christian friends. 
And again, he considered it important that the Sudanese should rediscover their own Christian origins, and Sudan was great long before it was Islamized. He did it with competence. He made himself available to our students. He had a remarkable memory, as has been mentioned by many people, and some of them have just said that he, he was a walking uh, library. He was one of the leading scholars in Sudanese studies. Uh, I myself invited him to the Department of Archaeology to give his um, uh, a sort of a lecture to our students at the Department of Archaeology. His personality was so uh, exceptional, as shown with his varied activities, uh, which I have already mentioned. He was really a great worker. Uh, he was admired as a scholar, um, man of faith, his kindness and generosity, and he was remembered with affection by his Muslim and Christian friends and students. May Allah the Almighty rest his soul in peace. He left knowledge and he left also the good deeds very much valued in Islam. Many thanks to Father George Naranju for his kind invitation and I'm wishing you a pleasant event. Thank you very much. Thank you.